Um, but anyway, so that leads us to the whole point of if you go by last year, I know there was a few Marvel films that were probably in the biggest bombs of the year, but this year they, they, they lucked out because guardians of the galaxy three didn't bomb. And, uh, but, uh, they got captain Marvel on the uh, list. I, I still, I'm going to, I, I still think that guardians of the galaxy wasn't profitable, but okay. Well, I, I, I'm not going to argue with that. Cause I think you're probably right. I, if it was profitable, it was barely profitable. But what we have here is their Fugazi math that they're working with. Um, Cause I think we've learned from Valiant and pro and from the other reporting that we've heard, these movies are costing a lot more. And I, I think they're going by the initial budget. They're not going by the actual budget. Um, first of all, yeah. they go, just, to, to, just to explain what, uh, what we are looking at here, because uh, we, yeah. we found uh, deadline Hollywood published a story of the five biggest bombs of 2023, four of which are Disney movies. And what Tom is referring to is the fact that they actually bombed more than deadline would have uh, would have you believe because we're still seeing a little bit of hollywood accounting here so when they admit that uh, that the biggest loser lost more than 200 million then the reality is it probably lost more than 300 million and and you'll also note that they're counting the self-dealing here and this is how i also found out that ninja turtles supposedly was somehow profitable Paramount paid themselves a hundred million dollars for it. Woo. Wow. So Paramount did the same thing that Disney does. So this $90 million, take that the fuck off the table right now. Cause you can't take $90 million from one pocket and put it in the other pocket and say, you just made $90 million. Oh, that's that, Hollywood that accounting true. for you. Wait, Paramount plus paid for, paid for themselves. Mutant or did they mayhem. Still finance it? Mutant mayhem. For mutant mayhem. Because they're claiming that movie made two hundred and four million dollar profit when it only made one hundred and eighty million worldwide. Because they're counting the hundred million dollars that Paramount played paid themselves for the movie. Wait, did that get exclusive on Paramount Plus? Because I thought I yes. saw that on something. No, else. Okay. it was exclusive on Paramount Plus. You know, in the you know US what? Anyway, could That's be very one thing that could be interesting in this that could uh, stick them in the eye is that you know how certain actors and sometimes writers will get a percentage of movie profits. Yes, or something like that, and and usually the accounting is bullshit anyway, and nobody gets paid out. But uh, in this effort to try to make people think that a project actually worked and is profitable, suddenly they do this chicanery, shift money around from one account to another, and then the actor comes back and says, "Where's my two percent?" And they go, "Well, no, no, it, it actually lost money." No, but oh, you Paul, just, yeah, you just promoted on the uh, trades that. It's made a hundred million dollars. Then pay me out. Well, yeah, but then we're gonna really lose more money. <laughs> well, you know where I I've, I brought yeah, this up many funny. times before, Paul, because actually uh, Ed Sullivan, the the co-creator of Bill and Ted and the writer of Men in Black, when Men in Black Four came out, he posted a story on X about how he went to go get his Men in Black money, and they keep right. telling him that Men in Black lost money. But that's the traditional he, story, Men in and Black. And he said, "Yeah," and yeah. that's what I I'm say. That, about this silliness here. <laughs> Well, this is the same thing. And this is all about, it depends on who you ask or who's asking. If, if it's the, if it's the journalist or the media asking, then it was the biggest box office hit of all time. If right. it's somebody who's asking, you might owe money to, they might Absolutely. owe money to, well, then it didn't make a dime. It was the biggest right. loss ever. In fact, they might not ever make a profit on it until never. Alex, so like, Alex, and that was the whole yes. point, Alex, which is why yes, you never but, uh, ask for net on your points. You always ask for gross. Because that's, Alec that's Guinness got uh, net on two percent net on Star Wars. No, he got gross. He got two percent gross on. Oh, he did. Sales. Yes, gross. always gross. It's never okay. net. The best deal ever made was Jack Nicholson for Batman. Yep. Yeah. Which was he was able to get because Marlon Brando did the same thing for Superman. I, I let me let me also say that another of the best deals ever made was um, RDJ's deal um, for all the Marvel films. He, oh, he's made bank on those. He yeah. Made bank. Yeah, and then the. Uh, Gosh, there's there's another one that's notorious. It's Tom Cruise, you know, first dollar deals that he gets. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, there's like there's so like anyway, a handful of guys. Anyway, sorry. So they're no, I'm just saying. So they're looking at okay. So what they have here is a breakdown. Um, <laughs> so they claim that it made a domestic and international total there together of two hundred six million dollars for the Marvels. 
and it costs 270 well we know it costs more than that they're putting 110 for prints and ads that sounds about right residuals and other distribution expenses okay uh interest and overhead okay uh and i don't know what participations they don't have anything there but they claim that it lost only 237 million how much do you think it really lost culture oh uh, uh probably north of 300 yeah i think i think they yeah. i think some of these expenses are a little undershot and again I mean, where's the reshoot yeah it doesn't have any of that stuff in it right it it it, it doesn't have there's a lot of things missing from this you know who's back. a lot of these is script doctor script doctor what's your gut reaction uh, um well it's it, the thing is again they're this is the part that has to be broken, which I don't think will ever be broken. And that is the fact that a lot of these movies, like they get a line of credit, but they also get that line of credit by also selling, pre-selling their stuff on distribution. So we don't know for sure. Like what, what we're technically seeing here are profit potential losses, meaning that if you have a negative, it's like that's how much of their expected profit they would have. Because the whole goal, especially with Disney and even with Warner Brothers and Universal, is that before they get into production, they do what essentially Bob Shea did with Lord of the Rings. They get it pre-sold, so they are literally starting from zero, which means all the money that they would have to spend to make the movie is not eating into the potential profits that they're having. They may have to sp spend a little extra on ads. They might have to spend a little extra on maybe some reshoots or post-productions. But ideally, the whole point is that when it gets to theaters, they're basically looking at a pure profit strategy after their take from what they get with the theaters. That's their goal. They don't always get the goal. Sometimes they get maybe 60% of the budget done, or sometimes they get 40% of the budget through pre-sales and, and, and loans. But that's what's really hard to discern because the pre-sale stuff doesn't go into the same report tax reporting of what they spent in the regions with which they shoot. So that thing leaves things ambiguous. And that's also one of the little strange attractors out there that doesn't allow us to know for sure how much a movie has actually lost or gained all we were able to rate is this is how much they were expecting to make most likely at the box office and because they didn't make that this is the calculated potential loss of what that was made so i would say their calculated potential loss is probably on point but since we don't have any of those additional financial numbers um until like a, what is it two more quarters we have to wait before the next set of filings for some of those movies so that price there that the studio net that they're reporting is probably going to be closer to like what 300 million of what they would get but if you take a look at the overall accounting probably not as big as a loss which is why they're able to weather it and why they're not so much why there's not as many people streaming to the high hills within corporations like disney and their and their larger investors streaming to the high hills is why they're losing this much because again if they're using that model which is a model that's been done for like 40 years um yeah, they're 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 still an okay standing, but it's not good because again, every studio should be making the money back if they as if they had spent it. And that's the problem here. We're looking at money yeah. that they're not making back as if they had spent it. Well, and I'd like to know where they're getting some of these numbers too, because now the television and streaming, well, that would be they say 90 million. Well, that's what Disney paid itself, right? Where are they getting this 40 million for home entertainment from? Because I'm trying to find the actual video sales and I can't. I can't find any video it on demand, be, DVD or Blu-ray. So couldn't it be pay-per-view or something like that? That's what I'm saying. That's probably a collection of all. But okay, then that, going back to what you and Colton were saying earlier, couldn't that mean pay-per-view distribution, internal payment of one money from one pocket back to the other pocket? Or not in this case. I will say this one is theirs. This sounds about right. You got 40 million here, so that's probably about 15, VOD. 20 million in DVD, Blu-ray sales, and then or, another. Or it could be just VOD. It could be just VOD. Well, yeah. it says home entertainment. Yeah, so I think it's, I think they're combining home. all of them. Is my point. Yeah. Here, here's the, here's one pat possibility. So the TV and streaming stuff would be the ninety million. That would be the cost to to move the license over to the streaming network. The home entertainment might be how much of the subscriber fee percentage can they claim is associated with that film, and that might be an estimate. Well, I think that's actually well. That's where television and streaming comes in. That's where I think they're considering what they're making from their the streaming. Oh, I mean, right. if, if it's selling it back to themselves, that would be a direct line of cost. The home entertainment would be the result of that cost. So if they spent ninety million and they managed to make forty million in profit, the overall cost expense would be fifty million that they have to make up for. 
because again, it's a monthly subscription fee, right? They're counting so, these together though as like a plus. That's my no, point. No, I'm counting them as a as a minus actually. So See, they're counting them as a plus. That's my point. So yeah, I, I have a question. Uh, I know Paramount and uh, and Warner Brothers is really good with the pre-sale, going out for pre-sale, going out to uh, uh, movie investment funds, which also take the risk. It's a little bit they don't loan money out. They they jo- they share the risk. Yep. Um, and they get uh, a percentage pro- profit point uh, on correct. Top of that. Correct. Uh, and so that's a much better deal for the movie houses anyway, because if you are loaning money, then they're the first people who get paid. But notwithstanding that, Disney, I, 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 they've never really had a reputation for pre-sale. Oh, they have actually. Since they got uh, Marvel and Star Wars, that's what they've been doing. They have, eh? Okay. So I'm yes, completely that's, ignorant that's why that. their budgets, I think, are so inflated is because they're not very good at it. What they're doing is they're only doing pre-sale th- theatrical. They're not doing pre-sale distribution because everything is going straight to Disney Plus. So that's the other part that's we we haven't figured out yet, which is okay. So they're pre-selling the territories with regards to theatrical distribution, giving them deals, giving them percentage points, whatever uh, on top of that. But they're also because they got so big so quickly, they were able to get huge, huge deals um, from mm-hmm. those markets. And then you also have like, okay, so they have their star internationally. So maybe they do something where they sell back to themselves again for, for that, which is another set of money, money moving uh, shell game. It, it's really complicated. I've been asking every accountant that I can get my hands on that I knew in Hollywood, how they might think it's working. And they're, they're still baffled by it. All they know for sure is that if Disney is losing as much money as it's being reported, they should technically be more of a panic than they right. expect now, but they're not. And she's like, it's telling me that there's something else going on there. With either they're either completely turning a blind eye to it, or there's something else going on there that could be um, business as usual or far worse. And I don't know what that is yet, and I don't know if I'll ever know what that is yet because no. Well, all that, all the, all the, uh, you know, Fugazi math aside, they're probably pretty close on their list here of the the bottom five films of the year with the Marvels, the Flash, which was shot so many years ago that it don't really matter anyway. Um, and the other four or other three, so the four altogether being Disney films is I think the biggest issue here, because here's the other next one. And this is the one I would argue probably lost the most. And this is where I think their math is really off because Indiana Jones and the dial of destiny, they claim only lost 143 million. Try again. I think it lost that much just in, in advertising. Yeah. Go ahead and culture no, no this this is this might be this might be up there with one of the worst flops in history yeah net loss 143 million try again we don't even yeah. we still don't even have the entire uh budget for this it was thing up to what like five or four hundred million the last time valiant and uh, yeah yeah I, I mean mikey would probably remember better than i would but i i don't know mike what it, what do you remember talking about with valiant on this one because i'm i'm thinking this is this is a ridiculous estimation so um i mean it could have i mean i can't remember the number off the top of my head i know we did it live on a live stream and i have that excel somewhere right um, i just can't, i just can't remember what the loss was yeah i i, I again I it, it, that's more in line here with the yeah. 300 yeah, I think it, yeah, I thought it was like three eighty something. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I I remember it was more than three hundred million. Yeah. I don't remember I how much more. I look here. You know yeah, what? Because oh, I posited it's probably the, the, hold on, I posited it's probably the biggest loss in history. Yeah, I think you're That's right. That's what I had said. Yeah, I'll find and I, it. yeah, and and what's really funny is we still don't even know how much it's lost. That's just where we figured it out. Right, that's not even where it actually is. It's it's yeah. it's in it's in. I love how much Disney place. paid themselves for it. Yeah, One hundred forty million dollars is what they paid for the Disney Plus streaming here. Ugh. Why? They're imagining things. And I'd like to know where they spent made that much on home video sales too, because I don't know too many people who own this one. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's a brilliant way of uh, trying to make it less. So like, oh, look, we put it on Disney Plus, and we made a hundred and twenty million putting it. Uh, no, you didn't. But uh, but this is about <laughs> saving face, and you see what happened right here now. Kathleen Kennedy is 
when she wants, she's on her way out the door. It could very well be that this was oh, I the found last it. movie to Thank be you. released while she while she's president of Lucasfilm. It would be very embarrassing if this was the worst flop of the year. Something It'd had be to very be embarrassing worse. if it was a bigger flop than Cleopatra with uh, Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Which it is. <laughs> it is. I yeah, guarantee sure you it is. I but guarantee because that movie actually technically the, made money. Mike found the numbers, didn't you? So is this a big, There you go. This is the Excel I movie. did uh, after Valiant's live stream. I did this on that Monday or that Sunday night. So domestic, international, and then the split box office, which those are averages 60, 40. Studio gets, theaters get, blah, blah, blah. Estimated production, marketing. And so the low uh, loss was 322 in the what we thought was realistic was 378. So I was, my memory was somewhat correct with a 380. Yep. Yeah, that, that was about uh, right. That was about right. Absolutely, it was. Yep. Uh, because I think that the, the loss that they reported for, uh, for the marbles, I mean, that, they reported a more than a 200 million loss. And that seems. I ballpark but indiana jones i agree with you guys that one they've used every single accounting trick in the book to make it look like less of a flop than it was well i disagree on marvels i think marvels lost more money too but i still oh i also think that it lost more but i don't think it lost as much more as did indiana jones and there was one footnote here guys i didn't we the, we we couldn't come up with a number so we did not include the phenomenal amount of merchandise and action figure sales Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, let's check in with those numbers. Oh, check in with how many people did Hasbro have to fire? A lot. Oh, yeah. And Hasbro were the ones putting the bill for those toys. Yeah, that's something I don't think that. Uh... I mean, I know our viewers understand, but I don't think people out there in the like the Twitter sphere and all that generally understand is that the merchandising, if they don't make the money that they they they're expecting on this, the studios aren't out that money. But what they are out is the next time out. Right. Like and that's where Star Wars. They don't even have a section anymore at my local Walmart. I was just trying to protect uh, Tom, you and Andre in case you guys get criticized on the internet about me not calculating and including the merchandise sales and the profit. Oh no. We... Yeah. I think, I think the merchandise sales kind of like duped the licensee. I, <laughs> mm-hmm. I made a funny this morning. <laughs> you did? Well, I was just joking how I didn't include the merchandise sales. That was only funny. You know what culture? I'm funny guy. What sales? Yeah. And then the next one we got is Wish, which was their big animated film of the year. And according to uh, Deadline, they lost about $131 million. Uh, now, I don't know much about this one's box office. But again, here we go with more television streaming. Now, this we know went straight to Disney Plus after it was in theaters. Uh, and it only made a lousy $64 million at the do- domestic box office. Ouch. Which is fifty-four million too many. I saw that movie with my kids because they wanted to. Wow. Well, and I can't believe how well it did internationally. Mind. Yeah. Well, they were bored out of their minds and wondered when it was finished. So it didn't get much repeat viewings. But the Disney brand does have um more power internationally still when it's not something overtly and super visibly woke. So yeah, I'm very disappointed into international audience for having supported Wish the way that they did. I mean, it was still a massive yeah. flop for Disney, but it could have been even more massive. It rightfully should have been. But new chance to send a message with uh, with the next and upcoming Pixar movies from the yeah. from the same self appointed new heads of animation. What was her name? Jennifer Lee or something like that. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Film threat did the did the scoop on it. I'm still working on my follow-up. I've just been busy the, the last few weeks here. Uh with how Jennifer Lee has taken over the Disney animation and completely and utterly ruined it. Fish uh, wish was her crowning achievement. So too bad it didn't flop even more, which it should have. Yeah. Yep. 
And uh, Tom H asks, what are the gross top grossing films? Well, they did a counter to this. And if we got time, maybe we'll get into it. But I call even more Fugazi on the numbers on that one. Uh, Cause that they're, they're claiming a bunch of movies that made money. And I think it's yeah. because they're claiming that's what we were talking about before with the here's streaming the, revenue. Yeah. Here's the thing to keep in mind. This comes from deadline. Hollywood deadline. Hollywood is an industry outlet. They're going to report the industry figures. So what the industry says themselves, say, hey, these are the numbers. That's what they're going to report. They're not going to do an honest report. And say, oh, well, actually, Disney, you know, one of our biggest clients, they lost. So they're not going to do that. And that's up for for people like Valiant Renegade, people like us. We're the one that's going to have to call out the edit in the official narrative. What Deadline Hollywood presents is the official narrative. The official narrative isn't always the actual narrative or the actual truth, rather. Well, we, we've always known that Hollywood communicates to themselves. Uh, anyone who reads The Hollywood Reporter or Variety knows that, that no one else is reading those newspapers or those entertainment publications except for people in Hollywood or, or in the entertainment uh, business. Even reviews in newspapers really were more of an interest to the people in show business than the public at large so yeah they have people uh, who are hired to monitor that kind of thing and send daily reports to the oh, yeah. get conscious with summaries of what oh, yeah. when, when i was reported when i was uh, head of tv comedy i would get a dossier of photocopied reviews and comments uh we had people scanning every single publication for every project that i was i had touched and uh, I got the dossier every morning to go through. Yeah, indeed. And we are about to move on here because we have other stories to cover, uh, such as uh, Sony wanting in on the Paramount action and Amazon taking on He-Man. Plus, there's yeah. more Fugazi going on in the realm of video gaming. Uh, but but, uh, uh, but before then, one, one, uh, one leaves and another one joins. Yes, we're we're losing Culture Casino and we're gaining a Yellow Flash. Yeah, well, that's a shame. I'm missing out on Yellow Flash again, but I do have to step out. Thanks for having me, everybody. Do Bye, check Culture. Out, do See check you, buddy. Out, do check out my review on uh, on uh, the the film I saw, the Fall Guy. Fall it, was guy. Really, it was very yeah. much worth it. I'll see you guys later and see you, Flash. Have a good one, you guys. Take care. Take care. Later, Culture. Yeah. So to finish off the list, Haunted Mansion. No surprise there. Didn't make any money. Oh, damn, uh, I thought I missed it. <laughs> we're almost done with it, and that's about it. Yeah, so four of the top or bottom five films of the year are Disney, although I'd say it's probably worse for him than this article's even. Uh, Haunted Mansion's an interesting example because it wasn't as yeah. bad a film as everyone may, made it out to be. I liked it. And if the Disney brand... I tried to watch it. But... If the Disney brand was still strong that would have been a nice little first base hit. I agree. I agree. I think that that movie flopped because of the damage to the Disney Correct. brand. Yep. People took a look at I mean, the if the, poster, Disney band, if the Disney brand was still strong, all these movies would do. No, no, no. But I'm, I'm talking, I'm just using that as an example of a oh. fair to middling movie is yeah. a perfect example of an okay in between the big hits movie kind of effort. Exactly. And they would have done because, fine. That's my point. Because it's a non-franchise. Uh, I got movie. you. All of the others are part of big franchises. Right. Whereas this just, one is a remake. I think back to the day, the man, when Disney movies were, I mean, they were events. Like the whole family would go. It was like Disney. Oh, yeah, even the worst of their crap it. made money. Yeah. Even the garbage. Well, I mean, the haunted mansion, that was kind of like a throwback. Well, that's when you get into the shit years. 2011. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're talking shit years, though, Andre. We're yeah. talking about like even their lesser uh, uh, animated films like Hunchback of Notre Dame and um, uh, 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 Hercules and stuff like that even made money. And those are kind of trash if you look at them in comparison to the I love Hercules. Films. I know a lot of people do, <laughs> but that movie came out in the wake of their. I know. Who put crap. my hair out? <laughs> well, the big problem was they lost Howard Ashman. That was the big loss right. there, too. 
Yeah. Who yeah. put my hair out? One of my favorite movie lines of all time. This clip was taken from Midnight's Edge in the morning, which streams live every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 9am Pacific Time on the Midnight's Edge main channel. There you can send in your live questions and comments before clips and full stream replays are uploaded to Midnight's Edge live archives. We are also on Twitter, Rumble, Odyssey and Facebook, so smash that like, help share, subscribe and join us.